in this section which is part 2 of the steam turbine presentation we will be discussing the various components of the steam turbine and their function <clears throat> these components include inner and outer casing turbine rotor diaphragms and nozzles emergency valves and control valves <clears throat> thrust collar bear bearings which is radial as well as thrust bearing shaft sealings turning gear and casing threads <clears throat> this figure on the left hand side shows the bottom casing of the turbine in this you can see the bottom casing of the turbine band kar do camera pointer <clears throat> this is the bottom half of the turbine and there are two casings inner and outer <coughs> casings what you see at the bottom is the upper half of the casing right hand side shows the <coughs> inner housing where as left hand side shows the outer housing of the casing a steam chest is connected to the inlet of the steam <clears throat> and where from where the steam goes to the casing the steam chest connect to the casing houses the governor valve and the over speed trip valves the casing contains the rotor and the nozzle through which the steam is expanded and directed against the rotating buckets diaphragm a stationary diaphragm separated the inner stage contains the inter stage nozzle and inter stage seals the nozzle expand the steam and direct it against the following rows of the rotating blade the diaphragms are adjusted on the assembly to allow for the rotor deflection and to ensure that the seals are concentric with the shaft the bottom half of the diagram diaphragms are located vertically in the casing groove by the seams at the bottom of the groove and laterally by means of adjusting a screw at the horizontal joint the top half of the diaphragms are fixed in the casing by same arrangement and lift along with the casing cover when casing cover is lifted it gets lifted <coughs> in this uh, slide you can see how the diaphragms are inserted <coughs> here in how the nozzles each nozzle is getting inserted one by one in the diaphragm and after that it is sealed on the right hand side you can see the two photographs showing the nozzles inserted inside the diaphragm both on the top as well on the bottom <clears throat> now <clears throat> the rotor is made of the a number of wheels connected now the on a circular wheel this is the shaft on the shaft there is a circular wheel called hub on the hub each blade is inserted one by one and then finally it is sealed and the blades are interconnected with a shroud to give the stiffness the blades are secured to the rotor by a process procedure called dovetailing which is shown on the extreme top right hand side 
turbine casing is a flexi thermo we call it thermo flexi casing there are two casings in the turbine what you see this is the this is the outer casing of the turbine this is the outer casing of the turbine while this one is the inner casing of the turbine <clears throat> the this two turbine we call flexi casing this two casings we call flexi uh, casing because the inner turbine slightly can slightly expand when it is heated and it can contract between when it is cooled there is a air gap provided between the two casings to reduce the <coughs> loss of the heat as well as is reduces the noise pollution <coughs> at the bottom you see the, here this is the shaft and there is a shaft seal that is the leveron seal we will discuss in the later slides and then you can see the this is the bearing housing this is the bearing housing this is radial bearing to take the load of the turbine and this is the thrust bearing to take the axial thrust of the turbine <clears throat> in addition to this there are so many other components which we can see in this slide <clears throat> this is the inlet side of the turbine where we have got thrust bearings we have got radial bearings this is the complete governing system of the turbine which we will be discussing in <coughs> another uh, programs here this is the nozzle through which the steam goes inside the turbine this is the balance disc the purpose of the balance disc is to balance the thrust of the turbine because when the steam <coughs> is flowing through the turbine the pressure is higher the pressure is higher on the inlet side where as well as, as it is low on the outer side the door so the shaft tries to shift towards the outlet side but this the steam which comes from here it comes here and it acts on this collar and tries to push the rotor on the inlet side that's how it gets the balance thrust this balance residual thrust is balanced in the thrust bearing shown here these are the gland this is the casing gland this is the casing gland the ceiling which we will be <coughs> discussing in the next uh, slide <coughs> turbines have got several stage on the outlet side we have got the radial bearing and then there are couplings <coughs> for connecting the driven equipment on the right top right hand side we can see the balance disc of the turbine this is the balance disc the steam inlet is coming here the steam inlet is coming here and there are labyrinth here through which this passes the steam passes now this steam lacking on the collar pushes the pushes the rotor towards suction side and that's how it balances the thrust created by the rotor on the blades which try to push it it towards the suction side <clears throat> some turbines have got shaft driven oil pump so when the turbine comes to the full speed the <coughs> oil is supplied from the shaft during the start up the oil is supplied from the actually ac auxiliary oil pump and when the turbine comes to the full speed and main oil pump develop the pressure auxiliary oil pump is always put on the auto start here you can see the control valve assembly this is the steam chest <coughs> this is this is your complete rotor this is your radial bearing this side is your radial bearing and thrust bearing here is the gland now one more thing we can see here is called the leak off 
what happens is that when the steam comes <coughs> on the balance disc and there is a the pressure there is much higher and a part of that steam through a <coughs> leak of line is bypassed to some lower stage of the turbine where it do, does some work <coughs> to drive the rotors this is the this is your rotor and rotor shaft and this is all the rotor blades this is the exhaust duct from where the <coughs> steam passes towards the condenser this is the rotor rotor cons consists of <coughs> so, so rotor we have already discussed this is the rotor this is the thrust collar this is grand sealing arrangement this is the curtis wheel and these are the rotor blades the rotor shaft on both side extends beyond the casing and to support the bearings in <coughs> the rotor blades are secured together on the top by shrouds to reduce the vibration in the blades and damage of the blade due to the vibration this is the lp stage where this is the lp stage whereas on left hand side is the hp stage of the <coughs> rotor rotor is provided with a manual barring arrangement as well as a barring gear to rotate the turbine slowly during the start up for the uniform heating as well as when the turbine is shut down <coughs> to cool it to a safe level to avoid the bending of the shaft and to maintain the straightness of the shaft to preserve the valve which <coughs> preserve the shaft from the unbalance shaft seals are provided on both ends of the bearing as well as between each and every stage <clears throat> on the top you see the leverent seals leverent seal reduces the leakage from high pressure side and allows a very small leakage in leverent seal there are projections both on the case housing of the turbine as well as on the rotors of the turbine <clears throat> on high pressure side it prevents the steam going out of the casing whereas on low pressure side in condensing turbine it don't allow the air to enter the turbine <clears throat> in multi casing turbines the carbon seal rig means segments as shown in the bottom are provided these seal segments are held together by the spring and there are anti rotation spots provided which are fitted in the nozzle in the bottom half of the inter stage casing carbon rings prevents the rotation of the so in this figure you can see various arrangements of the seal casing shaft and you can see the carbon ring shafts as well as the levering shaft <coughs> and at the bottom of the drawing you can see the location of the grand seal of the turbine <coughs> bearing housings supports and bearing support bearing housing support the housing casing and steam chest the bearing housing consists general bearing uh, to prevent the seal leakages and both thrust and air the <coughs> thrust as well radial bearings are there it also uh, houses the over speed tripping and to rotate to remove the condensate from the pipelines and the steam turbines <coughs> steam traps uh, with free drains are provided at various location to prevent the damage from the <coughs> condensate thank you very much in the <coughs> there are four parts and part 1 basic part 2 steam condenser part 3 and part 3 governing systems thank you very much